So I'm going to go ahead and, and introduce you to Brian Daniels. And just as a little full disclosure, Brian and I work together. Except I said I'm in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Brian is not because we are a remote team. And Brian and I do not work in the same office. But Brian is also a technical project manager at Square. And he's been here a little bit longer than me. In fact, I believe he's been working for the company for about six years now. Whereas I've been here for Square for about a year. And Brian is our, on our team, as most teams, you have somebody that's really good at one thing and somebody who's really good at another thing. Well, Brian is our Google guy. I'll just put it that way because if I have a question about how to use Google, and I used to be really good at reading all the Google analytics and then they changed at the speed of light because they're Google and they can. And now if I have a question, I ask Brian. So with that, I'm going to turn this over. Oh, hi, Andrew. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the uh, presentation. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Brian, who can tell you more and can tell us all about Google. Brian? As Mark alluded to earlier, we're going to talk about Google Analytics. And uh, we'll go into that a little bit deeper. Mark also mentioned that I keep up with things Google. So there's a lot of different Google products that can help you take advantage of measuring your website promoting your website, all sorts of cool things like that. And I think pretty much all of them are free. So we're going to look at Google Analytics. That's just one of the products that they offer that will tell you a little bit about how your website is performing. Okay. So website analytics, we can see here, it gives you insight and data about what can create a better user experience for your visitors or what is already creating a good user experience for your visitors. So these can include things like, where are people coming from? Are they using like Google searches to find you? Or are they coming from social media or maybe ads? You can also get a little bit of insight into what they're searching for to find you. You can find out who is coming to your site. So it has some information about users' ages and I think gender demographics is still there and also some location information so you can see like countries and cities and states and stuff like that and see maybe there's certain parts of the world that are coming to your site and maybe you want to speak to them more. You can also see how they are engaging with your site. So for example, how long they're staying on your site, how many different pages do they visit? Are they interacting with my content? Are they like downloading files or clicking on things or maybe viewing some of the pages that have videos? And then we can start making some deductions or we could start thinking about things like what pieces of content are performing better. Uh, we could look at stuff like, are my blogs doing better? Are my case studies doing better? Are they reading about my organization's departments or looking at careers on our site? This can help us figure out what we'd like to promote more or what we maybe need to beef up a little bit more because people are visiting these pages. So the end goal of all of this is to try to convert visitors into customers or constituents. So the only reason we want people to come to our site and the only reason we want them to engage in our site and learn about us is because we have. So in the past, there's a whole bunch of different products to figure out how people are engaging. You see some stuff here that record screencasts and conversion metrics and all that stuff. And they've got all confusing because you had 10 different places where you had to go pull things together and make some assumptions. So now Google Analytics brings a lot of that stuff together in one reporting system, and it's absolutely free. So some stuff out of the box here is you can tell how many different users are coming to your site, how many pages are getting page views. A page view is basically like how many times a page is loaded. So we can see a hundred, hundred times our home page was loaded or you know, something like that. The average number of pages visited. So for example, we could see when a person comes to our site, they on average go to three different pages of our website before they bounce or leave the website. The average time on site, how long they've been on the site before they actually leave. Demographic information we've touched on earlier what types of people are coming to your site and where they're located and what devices they're using. So we can see, are they using a tablet, a desktop computer, a mobile device? These can help us gain insight into, do we need to improve any of the performance here? If we've got a whole bunch of people coming to our website from mobile, we better make darn sure our mobile website is, is user-friendly. 
and then figuring out where they are coming from. So again, we mentioned, maybe you'll see that a lot of people are coming from Google search engines, or maybe they're coming from social media, or maybe they're not coming from social media. And then that can tell you, okay, maybe we to beef up, beef up our uh, social media campaigns to drive more traffic from these other sources. It can also tell you a little bit about how fast some of your pages are loading. Google, I think, wants pages loading between two to five seconds or something like that. So this can also tell us, okay, there's these pages, they're loading really slow for some reason. There is a chance that maybe Google won't rank them as higher as other pages. It tells you about which pages are performing better than others. It can tell you about how your ads are performing. So if you have a Google ad placed directing to a specific page, you can get some information about, okay, how many clicks were driving people from my ads to this page. And again, your social media impact is it, are your marketing efforts and social media actually working? It has custom goals that you can set up. These can get as granular as you want. Like maybe it's somebody fills out my contact form. That's one goal. Or maybe it's something very specific. Let's say that you're a for-profit selling products or something like that. And you want your goal to be first, the person views my product page, then they go to the cart, then they go to checkout. And then finally they complete their checkout. That helps with stuff like Google ads, because you can start seeing if they follow the funnel, they call it rather than jumping around. So it just gives you some options in creating different goals. And they have a pretty good e-commerce reports. So. I mentioned like funnels of how they get through your goals. They can also tell you things like which products are performing the best and how much revenue I'm bringing in total or per product, how many times a specific product has been purchased. So what does this look like? I've got the square Google analytics pulled up and it's after an hour. So we don't have too many visitors right now, but we have real time reports, which is what I have pulled up here now. And first off, let me point out that I am looking at a universal analytics report and we'll go into why I'm saying that so loud and clearly right now, later in this presentation. So here we have some real time information. How many people have visited the sites in the last five minutes? What pages are they looking at? Where are they at in the world? Again, you can drill in to see if, which city they're in, Dallas, etc. We have some information on the audiences themselves. So here we have, like I mentioned earlier, demographics. We can see ages, genders, where they are, behavior. Are they new versus returning? Technology, such as which browsers and stuff they're using. Are they on mobile, tablet, et cetera? Acquisition is related to how people are getting to your site. So we touched on this a little bit, or maybe they're coming from ads or from Google searches or social campaigns. And then we can see our behavior on the website. So what are they doing once they get there? And here you can see like our top performing pages, how many times these pages were viewed. And we can get into things here, like I was saying, site speed, if you have search on your site, what are they entering in your website to find things, et cetera. And then there's conversion goals. This is what we were talking about earlier. Maybe there's a goal of, I want somebody to fill out my contact form. So that is the goal that you set up and it will tell you how many times somebody has filled out that form. Brian, I'm going to jump in. This is Susanna. I see hey, somebody's, hi, this, I see somebody's raised their hand. Are you willing to take questions in the middle or do you want to wait to the end? Sure, I'll give them a shot. That page appeared like magic. Could you go to a homepage like say people.com? Show us how you got to that. How we got to uh, the analytics reports? Yeah, imagine you put up a browser and the user set the homepage to google.com, just like that. You can always search for Google Analytics. I should be the first thing that pops up. There is also, I know the URL here, it's analytics.google.com. And so once you're taking there, if you're already logged into your Google account, then it should start showing you your dashboard. Otherwise it's going to take you to the standard log into your Google account login page. And then I believe you'll just get redirected back to the analytics dashboard. Okay. So that's the, the dashboard page, which you'll Correct. Yeah. 
better. Andrew, just to jump in here, to get the Google Analytics to work on your website, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you still have to put the custom code in the head of your website? Yes. Yes, you do. We'll get into that a little bit deeper yeah. here in a little bit. So, yeah. So, Andrew, if you went to Google Analytics right now, you wouldn't see, unless you have a site set up already, you wouldn't see much of anything other than them offering to walk you through how to set something up on a website. Yeah. So I think um, the first time, if you don't have anything set up, I think there's like some, there's something that tells your URL and all that stuff. But there are a few steps for it to start getting information from your website into this Google Analytics platform. And again, we'll go over that a little bit. Okay. So tacking onto that, there are several Google products that can work together with Google Analytics. There is a Google Tag Manager, which is something that can be used to put the Google Analytics tracking stuff on your website. It can also help you do some more advanced things, like maybe I want to track Facebook ads or number of clicks on my website. All that stuff can be set up in this Google Tag Manager. And that feeds into Google Analytics. And there's a, a wealth of information on the internet about how to connect these things together, how to set up Tag Manager and stuff like that. There's also a product called Search Console. And this is specifically related to how people are using the Google search engine. So for example, what they're typing in into Google search and which pages it's returning. What are the highest performing pages from a Google search? So specifically to Google search engines only, and then that can feed into your Google Analytics account. So you've got kind of this robust tracking options here, plus stuff coming from your search console. And then they also have a Google Data Studio, which is just a real fancy report builder that can give you some beautiful charts and stuff like that. And that can pull information from Google Analytics as, as well as some other data sources. There we go. Okay. So some of you may already have Google Analytics installed on your website. As I mentioned before, very briefly, we were looking at universal analytics. And this is a version of the analytics. It is actually also Google Analytics 3. And now they have Google Analytics 4. So that means that this universal analytics that we were looking at a minute ago will be reaching its end of life in July of 2023. So there's about a year or so that it's left. And then they're going to be making everybody upgrade to this Google Analytics 4. So Andrew, when you set up your account, it's going to just automatically set you up with this Google Analytics 4. You won't even have to worry about Universal Analytics or any of that stuff we looked at already. You're going to see the newest and uh, latest and greatest version. As I mentioned, it's reaching its end of life in 2023. For those of you that are already using it, definitely upgrade to the newer version as soon as you can. They've completely changed, I guess you could say, under the hood of how they're tracking everything. And there is a line in the sand. So by that, when you start using Google Analytics 4, all of your data starts fresh. You don't have access or you don't have your old universal analytics historical data in your Google Analytics 4. Um, obviously, this is upsetting a few people, but the reason is because, again, there's been a complete overhaul of how Google Analytics is working. Now, you will have a limited amount of time to access that historical data. So I think they said about six months after the end of life, you'll still be able to see all of your old universal analytics data. But by about the end of 23, that stuff is just going to be gone. So point being, upgrade sooner than later. You can do it. Now, as soon as possible, you can start collecting some of that data in the new format, then you don't have to worry about missing out on some data all of a near future. One of the major advantages of Google Analytics 4 is there's a whole lot of options to customize reports and dashboards and stuff like that. Again, one of the ways, reasons that they're getting rid of the old data and making you start fresh is because it changes how it tracks the activity. 
So before this may be a little technical, but when a person comes to your website, they would drop a little tracking cookie in your browser that would follow your activity through the site. And they would count these as sessions, which is a session is the point that you went to the site to when you leave the site. Now they've gotten rid of this whole sessions tracking in order to make it more specific to a user itself, which is actually great because it has better way of deduping and unifying data. So for example, in the old way or the universal analytics way, somebody could go to your site and now, and then they could go to your site again in an hour and they could go to your site again tomorrow. And each one of those times it would say, Hey, there's a new session or, Hey, you would, you would think there's a new person visiting your site, but in actuality, it was just the same person three different times. So they've done a better job of doing that now so that you can get better analysis of are these returning people or brand new people. It also allows you to do some more advanced stuff out of the box, such as seeing how far people are scrolling down your pages. Now that might be helpful. Imagine that you have a blog article and it's really long and you get some insight into, okay, people are only scrolling down halfway through my article and then leaving the page. Maybe your next article, you maybe want to write a little bit shorter. So you, read the whole thing. you can also get things like clicks out of the box. Are they clicking on links? Are they downloading files? Are they playing videos on my site? If you're using YouTube videos, then you can actually see some information. The percentage of videos that were watched, did they watch 100% of my video? Did they just watch 50% of my video, et cetera. Now, again, a lot of this can already be set up with universal analytics by using the Google Tag Manager, but it takes some time to set up. With Google Analytics 4, that's a lot more readily available out of the box. Now, one of the coolest things I think is they have, they call machine learning insights. And this is kind of big brother artificial intelligence but it can start looking at some of your data, analyzing your data, and learning your things like trends or anomalies. Like, for example, we touched on a minute ago. Okay, there's a bunch of people that are coming from social media and they're going to this page and they're reading half of your blog. That's a trend that they may identify for you without you clicking around and trying to make some analysis on your own. It can also tell you some anomalies, like for example, every once in a while, a website may get hit by some sort of spam bot or something like that, which will just totally skew your analytics table. Like maybe you normally have 50 people viewing a page and then for some reason the next day you're like got 5,000 people looking at the page, but you have no idea unless you start to to those reports. So that's something that the machine learning activity going on here, you might want to look in like a way to purchase things on your website. This maybe not just products, but these could be membership dues being paid or donations or event registrations. It can also help predict some of that purchase information for even a specific user. Now this would require somebody actually logging into your site, but let's say somebody regularly registers for an event. Let's say that everybody logs into TechSoup website, registers for events, and they all cost money. We can start getting some predictions of, hey, Brian usually registers this many times for this many paid events. We assume that he is going to be during for this many events next time. So you can start getting a little bit of insight into how much money you may be bringing in the future. Hey, Brian, Pete yeah. was wondering if you still need to use Google Tag Manager with Google Analytics 4. That's a great question. Technically, no, but I always recommend that we use Google Tag Manager um, just about any time you can. As a matter of fact, I always tell everyone, if you want to use Google Analytics, go ahead and install Google Tag Manager. The main reasons are, like we touched on earlier, there's a whole lot more advanced stuff that you can do. Now we talked about like clicks and scrolls and all that stuff. There's even more things that you can do with Google Tag Manager other than those things. And again, you could uh, search online. There's so much information about some of the cool stuff you can do with it. 
Another thing that I love about Google Tag Manager is you can do some of that stuff or pretty much all that stuff without a developer. So you have your developer one time, put this Google Tag Manager code snippet on your website. Then you just go into the Google interface and you can set up all these cool little tracking things without having to put any other code on your So in other words, every time you want to track something new, you don't have to go to a developer and say, hey, now you got to put this thing on my website and then you got to wait two weeks for them to do it. And maybe they didn't do it right. You have to go back. And there's a lot more features from Google Analytics for a lot of them. I'm still learning myself, even though it's been around for several months. I'm still getting more familiar with it. I know one thing, again, is related to monetization or getting information about revenue and universal analytics is basically focused on e-commerce stuff, products and stuff like that, that people are buying directly from my, in the new reports, you can start tying other things together. Like for example, if you're selling ads, how does my ad revenue factor into how much money I'm bringing in? If somebody, if you have an application, like a mobile app that you have, uh, somebody has to buy to download. You can pull that data in, or you see all these like in-app purchases now. You can pull all of that data into Google Analytics and get a more broader idea of where your money's coming from. Okay. Andrew, I think this is where you were getting at earlier. So the very first thing that you have to do, is sign up for a Google account if you don't already have one. And I think it's just like accounts.google.com. You can just do a quick search for get a Google account or sign up for a Google account and that'll walk you through it. Now, if you already have something like Gmail or really any Google product, you already have an account. So if you have a Gmail account, you already have a Google account. Once that's set up, you need to go to that site we saw earlier, analytics.google.com, or you can do a search to find it. And then it's going to walk you through the little wizard to set everything up. That's ultimately going to give you a tracking script, which, I'm sorry, I jumped over this. The tracking scripts are different from Universal Analytics to, to Google Analytics. And I'll um, elaborate at that, uh, more on that in a second. But they'll give you a little tracking script that you'll copy and paste. And then again, my recommendation is to set that up through Google Tag Manager. So. Just like the analytics, you can go to the Tag Manager website after you're already logged in, click the create, whatever they call it, they call it containers. And it'll have a little wizard that'll walk you through everything. And it's pretty simple. There's some buttons that say, set up Google Analytics, and you just paste in your little code that they gave you when you're setting up your analytics account. And then again, if you're using Tag Manager, this is the code snippet that you'll want to put in. So after you go through this wizard, they're going to give you another code snippet. And that's really all that you would care about once you have Tag Manager set up. Because again, you give it to your developer, they would put that one code on there and then you could do whatever you want with that bother. I mentioned earlier, there's the Google Search Console, which tells you about how people are searching through the Google search engine. You're going to want to make sure that you have that set up on your site. Again, there's a little wizard that can walk you through it. And there's also a little wizard that tells you how to connect it to your Google analytics to bring all that data together. And then I was touching on this earlier. If you already have your universal analytics. And you're upgrading to Google Analytics 4, that little tracking snippet that they gave you originally is going to change. So this is why we're seeing that you're, there's the line in the sand, you're going to have totally new data in your new version of Google Analytics because basically it's coming from a different tracking script. Now, both of those can be installed on your site at the same time. So you can have Universal or Analytics tracking script on installed and the new Google Analytics 4. So basically what that means is you'll start getting data to two different accounts, which would be good if you start looking at some of that historical information. And then just know that eventually in July or a few months after that, only your new G4 
script is going to be working. Rick has asked, is there any reason to use Google Data Studio if you are only using Google Analytics and Google Search Console, not any ads or other data sources? The short answer is no. I find that the Data Studio is really more for managers, I would say, because they can give you the options, like there's templates and stuff like that, where you can say, I want pie charts and graphs and all sorts of visual aids, which a lot of managers lead up. They can just say, oh, look at this pretty report and they can get email to them every week or whatever, and then they're happy. But you can get all this stuff out of the Google Analytics reports sell this. Yeah. I have a side by side here. Go ahead, Mark. Oh, the other question is if you upgrade to Google Analytics 4, will it delete the old account or will it preserve it until it's end of life? It will preserve it. So let me back up for a second. It's all controlled through these tracking scripts or little code snippets. And there will be one for Universal Analytics and one for Google Analytics 4. And you can put both of them on your site at the same time. So it would continue to track your universal analytics all the way through its end of life. At the same time, you could start collecting data in Google Analytics 4. So you would have data being sent to two places. Just eventually the old version will stop working. Here on the left, I have the new version of Google Analytics 4. See, it's a little bit cleaner. They've tucked things away a little bit more. So come on, slow computer. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, there is a lot more customization options in Google Analytics 4. And they have like different templates you can go through. You can click on some of these and uh, pull in, I want page views, I want demographics and stuff like that. This is also a lot of what's in the data studio. So they have templates and stuff like that in the data studio that look very much like this. Should have mentioned this earlier. One of the other advantages of the data studio over these reports is really you could get stuff from a whole lot of other places, not just Google. So if you have other platforms or products that you use that aren't even Google related, you can pull all that stuff into um, a single report using that Google Data Studio product. What we're seeing here in the new version of Google Analytics is only stuff related to what's in your Google Analytics account, or in other words, what is coming from your website. Now our version of Google Analytics 4 is not really set up, so you're not really seeing much information here. But I think the key thing to show you is if you're already familiar with the old version, things have moved around. If you need to find things, they've got this wonderful little search here. You can start typing in something like demographics. I don't know where my demographics report is anymore. You've moved it. And the search can help you find things a little bit easier. And then you have little report builders where you can create custom reports. You don't have to use a template. You can do whatever you want. You can add them to different dashboards. So when you log into the account, you have a little dashboard, or I guess you could say dash sets, all those different little things. And you can customize these, put them wherever you want, and stuff like that. You can also automatically send reports from the Google Analytics here. So let's say you create one of these reports or maybe you already use one of the templates or reports that are here. There's options to say, email this person, this email address based on some frequency. So I could say, email Mark this report every Monday or email this Mark to Mark the first of every month. So you do have those ways of automating those beautiful reports with graphs and stuff like that without actually having to do. It's almost unforgettable. Let me show you real quick. I'm about done here, but again, All right, Andrew has a would you find an employee? Yeah. Hang on one second. Let me, let me pull it up on another monitor real quick so I don't have the some sensitive information on the screen. So this is tag manager. And when you think of a tag, you could almost think about it as um a type of 
tracking or a tracking script, maybe even. I think it'll make more sense if I just click on, let's see, add a new tag here. So if you click on this first box here, it's the only thing you, first thing you can click on, it's gonna give you all these populated options or whatever. So if you wanna install universal analytics, you can click on that one and you just put in your little tracking number here. And then you would say, when do you want it to, they call it fire, when do you want it to trigger? And you would put in here, I want it to show on all pages. So use this Google Analytics tracking with all pages that are loaded. And then you have your new Google Analytics 4. You can do things like put in your Google ad tracking scripts. Again, this is something that you would normally have to tell your developers, put this one in, put that one in, put this one in. But you can go in and set all these up as you create them. You create them. Uh, Brian, um, what do you do? How do they become associated with your website? So for example, Google ads, when you set up a, an actual Google ad, they're again, going to give you a little tracking script, which you would then come into tag manager, pop that in here. And that's how it would tie that information. We'll actually tie it to two different places. There's like an ads reporting and then all that stuff would also get fed into Google Analytics. But in short, to answer your question, this is how you would get it tied to your website is by putting these different tags or tracking scripts into the website. Okay, so let's say I've got a website, it's got one page that says Hello yes. World. And now how do I put the Google Analytics tag into that website? Okay, let me back up here. So again, it's gonna have a little wizard that walks you through the very first time. I'm going to go to the admin area. If you ran past it and need to come back, you would go to admin. And then there is a link here, install Google Tag Manager. So they give you this little tracking information here. It tells you where you would put it in your website. Like this part has to go in your head tag. This part has to go to your body tag. So this is what you would send to the developer or whoever has access to the code of your website. So they would install this thing. Yeah, Go ahead. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's installing tags requires a developer, basically. It's going to be actually, it's a snippet than the HTML. Yes, this would have to be added directly to the HTML. Cool. Okay. That's yeah. And then after you have tag manager there, you can basically do all the other implementations without bothering that because we would use this to say, okay, now we want to use Google analytics tracking. We want to use the new version. We want to use ads. We don't have to put any other code on our, in our HTML. This one thing can do it all. We would just manage it through this tag manager and it says, okay. Aside from just the basic things we saw with the newer version, it can walk you through things like I want to track clicks. That would be in the triggering section. So I want to see every time somebody is clicked on an external link and internally scrolling. These are things that are available now out of the box with Google Tag Manager and the new Google Analytics. So it, it, you have the flexibility of saying when you want these things to happen, not just what you want to happen, if that makes sense. So I want to track it only when somebody goes to the content pick contact thank you page, send that information to Google Analytics whenever that happens, not on every single page. So you have a lot of flexibility in controlling the what and the when something happens or something needs to be true. There's a lot of information here and I think Google makes it difficult on purpose just to either frustrate you or to maybe try to get some more money from you. But again, there is a lot of information out there on the internet. They even have Google Analytics Academy and the same thing for Tag Manager, Data Studio and all that stuff. If you just search for Google Analytics Academy, they have some free online courses that are going to show you more about how to use these things. They have them for like beginners, advanced power users, et cetera. So you can go through these little online tutorials for free to learn more about these things in depth. 
So that would definitely be the first place I would start even before you have it installed, if you want to learn more about it, to see if you even want to use it. And as Mark mentioned, we'll have this recorded. It'll be up on the internet. You can rewatch it. If any of my wealth of information has a, we have all sorts of blogs on the square web. Anybody have any other questions for Brian? Oh, look at that, Brian. You did such a good job that they don't have any more questions. Either that, that or I really confused everyone. <laughs> no, so my biggest takeaway is go look for Google Analytics Academy. You can do a quick search for it. It'll show you how to use things in a general overview, how to get really advanced with it. You could go through that to even evaluate if you want to use it. The next biggest takeaway is if you're already using the older version, upgrade to the newer version and start collecting data as soon as possible. All right, Brian, thank you very much. Really appreciate your presentation tonight. Uh, Susanna, I just asked real quick if you have anything to add before we wrap up this evening. No, I don't have anything to add. Just a big thank you to Brian and thank you to everybody who came. All right. Thanks, everyone.